I'm Taylor Oracle, and this is a reading for FRC. It's an astrology reading. I've had to start using three initials instead of two because I've gotten over 100 requests. So, and a lot of them have the same birthday. So that'd be kind of confusing. One has the same birthday and same initials as another person. So anyway, uh, yeah, it takes a long time to do these. And with 100, it's, it's quite intimidating. So let's go over FRC's chart, who has a quite an interesting chart. As you can see, we have this nice distribution of planets and let's start over here with the first house or the ascendant so what we have here is a gemini sun sign gemini sun sign is all about communication learning expanding gets feedback from other people loves to talk loves to chat good with small talk a gemini overall is going to be good with life because it's going to be able to communicate their emotions be able to do things um, in an organized manner, uh, maybe a bit on the ADHD side sometimes, but you know, overall just very communicative and able to learn things quickly, especially now that we also have Mercury in here as well with this pretty tight aspect of the sun. So that's going to be a good thing. So that being sort of blinded by the sun within that three degree margin means that uh, it, it was sort of late bloom as far as communication goes, maybe a bit of a late bloom. In other words, it's sort of hard at first. Maybe you were shy when you were younger and things like that. But as, as time progressed on, everything got better and it improved and you're able to sort of come into your own and come into your um, come into yourself type of thing. So now we have look over here at the first house. We have this interesting conglomeration of uh, things, planets, and the uh, Arabic part. So this is the Scorpio ascendant type thing, which means that you do have a bit of that Scorpio tendency towards maybe a bit of a temper, or maybe a bit of a perfectionist in some things. Sort of, you know, when you're when you're done wrong, you want to make sure that person knows that you're angry at them. And when you get angry, people just sort of get out of your way. You know, the usual Scorpio thing. But Scorpio also has that passion and that 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 beauty and that passion and, and the, the, uh, the ability to really connect with your partner and things like this. And you see that over here in the seventh house as well, where we're fixed, by the way, with Taurus, which kind of means that you like that partner stability, right? You like that Taurus. You, like, you know that you're going to have to work at keeping a partner. You know you have to work at maintaining a relationship. It's not going to be something that's easy. But once it's there, you like that fixed sign type feel, right? And the moon is there as well, meaning that you, you really need to connect emotionally with your partner. I know that sounds obvious, but I mean, a lot of people are just like, hey, you know, I got a partner, I'm financially stable, I'm good, whatever. But you're not like, you're not like that. You like the stability, obviously, we're in a fixed sign, but you like that emotional connection. You want to really be able to read your partner's emotions and um, your lover's emotions and, and, and other people in general as well. You're good at sort of reading their emotion, especially with that Mercury sitting over there in your sun sign. And, and you're able to not only communicate, but you're able to see very quickly if somebody likes you or not, or if they, you know, they, they dislike you, you kind of want to be away from them and things like that. But you're able to make friends and make those connections. You're able to make the emotional connection as well. And with a partner, again, it's going to be a heavy emotional context. And it's going to be something to where, again, we're in fixed. You really want that connection. Not only that, but you want to be able to uh, uh, you want to be able to be stable with somebody. You don't want a new partner every week, right? You don't want a new partner every month. You want that stability, sort of that rock solidness of that Taurus in your seventh house of relationships. So we look over here at the basically the uh, domicile Lord of the Hour marker, right? We're talking about we're talking about that. A lot of your life has been not only self-discovery, because we do have this, you know, this stellium of things over here. I don't, I don't know if an Arabic part counts as a stellium. I know you need three plants. You got two, I don't know, whatever. Rules, rules, and more rules. So you sort of have this quasi-stellium part of it. In the, and it's one of those things to where your life has been a lot of a journey of self-discovery. And, and some of that journey... Again, we go into the Lord of the Hour market being over here. Some of that journey has been at work, right? And your career and your self-discovery has not only been just yourself looking at yourself or learning about yourself or expanding your knowledge maybe about, you know, who you are maybe astrologically or who you are with 
tarot or sort of meditations and things like this. But it links right over there to the 10th house. And the, not only the career, but how you present yourself to people and how you are, are seen by other people and your legacy, right? So you're getting up there in the years and, and sort of your legacy is behind you. And I think that your legacy is is actually, you know, pretty good. And But it, it has some to do with work as well. And you can see with Mars sitting up there that you do get the work done. And again, we're at fixed, right? We're at that fixed right there and that fixed. You're able to get that stability when you have it and you're able to get the work done. You do have to go forth and work for it. You've had to look for jobs um, you know, pretty, pretty, um, pretty uh, aggressively or assertively in order to find jobs sometimes. But you, but again, we also have that serves as your Lord of the Hour marker is kind of a an odd beast here because that's your malefic contrary to the sex sitting over there in your tenth house, right? In Leo, that 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 tenth house being Leo sort of says that not only is it your legacy or how you present yourself to other people, but it's very important to you. You have that Leo there. It's important to, for people to see you, uh, well, you know, maybe not as you are, but yes, as you are. But sometimes you want to be, you want to present yourself in, in the best possible manner a lot of times. And it work as well in your career. You want to be the best possible presentation of yourself. So that probably you've spent, you know, some extra time. Um, sort of looking at your image, maybe your corporate image or your image of how you've done things and how you leave your legacy. And as you get up there in years, you are sort of concerned about how you do leave your legacy, right? What have you left behind? What do people know you as? What, uh, what kind of things are going to be important for people to mention, you know, after you've gone type thing? And that's important to you. And I think you've put a lot of effort into that. You put a lot of work into that. And that's something that's, that's vitally important to you. Now, the Malefic contrary to the sect is your domicile Lord of the Hour marker, which is, yeah, whatever. Um, so that also means that you've had some difficulty with this. You've had some difficulty getting that Leo image out. Maybe your image has gotten spoiled with some people. Maybe some people really didn't see you as you are, right? And you sort of had to transform that as well. Again, this is a slow planet, deathly slow planet. So, But you've had to do some transformation. That's sort of like our the generational thing, your generational thing. You've had to do some transformation of who you are when you present yourself to people. So there has to be some changes made to make it better and things like this. So I could talk this about an hour, but we'll, we'll sort of wrap it up here. We'll go back to the um, third house real quick and talk about Saturn. Now, Saturn is usually considered a malefic, but that's going to be, you know, we were in a day chart. That's not going to be a powerful malefic. Um, it is plus five if you go over here, and it's plus five because it's sitting in its own ruler. So Saturn is comfortable over here in its own domicile, per se. So so when you're looking at your third house, a third house is about relatives, a third house is about communication. So we're back to maybe people haven't treated you as well as they could, especially with communication-wise. Maybe you've been sort of you know, down a bit that maybe you've had some conflicts with family, maybe you have some some issues getting your point across to family. It looks like even family could have interfered with your work. Um, it could have been something maybe you worked for the family or worked in a family business for some time and and had some challenges with that. It seems like the family is sort of working against you sometimes. This is like siblings uh, and, and things like this. So there's a close family has been a bit of a challenge. I mean, you, you're going to see that, especially with a plus five. You're going to see that across, you know, that your your the decades, and you know, you're going to see that that issue across there. So we look at the aspects. You you don't have a lot of a lot of just terrible aspects and things. We do have this thing again with back with the presentational ability and how you people see you and things like that. A lot of times. You've had to work for that or her work with that has been kind of a challenge as well. But we have the, you know, a couple of the positive things as far as love and relationships are concerned. We have this applying tight aspect here where, you know, maybe maybe you've been overly emotional in relationships. You've gotten too gushy. You've gotten too attached. Right. Because we see some of that across here as well. Um, as far as uh, trying to get 
trying to get some of your dreams to to manifest and things to come your things to go your way sometimes that's been that's been something to where you've had to get on a strict uh, strict schedule or a strict regimen trying to get that with that applying aspect over there as well so I uh, don't really want to talk about this for like a year uh, let's see let's go over your so much stuff to go over let's go over your worksheet let's go over your worksheet so good planet Obviously, it's going to be Jupiter when a day chart. So whenever you see Jupiter wandering around, it's going to be a good planet. Google software update. Allow. Sure. Um, let's see. Whenever you, um, whenever we see that planet, that's going to be a good thing, right? And we, it's plus zero, so it doesn't have a lot of superpowers. The one that's going to have superpowers is going to be your Saturn, your Mercury, you know, and your Moon, which, which kind of syncs with uh, that being interesting, right? So your sign of fortune. In other words, where the fortune is, that's going to be over there in Scorpio. Lord of the Hour marker and perfection sign for this year, because we're in the first year. Perfection is going to be Mars, right? Perfection house is going to be one. So it looks like that 2019 has been a bit of a a bit of a bite, a bit of a bite in in here, in here. So we have 2019 here, and we have 2020. Um, 2019 looks really challenging in a lot of ways especially when you look at let's say the outer transits we just have a lot going on it looks like the the especially the latter half of 2019 may have been just just a, a beat down because look at the look at this i mean it may just been have uh, been a beat down and and maybe you're sort of feeling that maybe the latter half of 2019 is sort of just weighing on you and we have a lot of this again with the uh, transits, but you can kind of see that as well in some of the other charts as well. But 2019 may have been a bit of a challenge, and we'll see that as well again in the Zodaka releasing in just a second. Um, but 2020, I think, is really going to pick up. 20, 2020 has a lot of interesting things. I think you're in for some money, and I'm wondering if maybe you're in for an inheritance. I'd like to know about this. We'll look at another chart that talks about inheritance as well. Otherwise, I wouldn't mention it, right? I mean, you don't just go into the natal chart, just throw down the word inheritance. But, but the reason I'm saying it is because I have another chart that sort of shows inheritance as well. So let's talk about that. I mean, are you, are you uh, looking at some type of inheritance? Are you looking at, um, you know, changing some, some things in your will for inheritance? We just, see that, we just see that theme, not only here, but elsewhere as well. Let's go back to the worksheet. Um, your climb periods are going to be cardinal signs. Peak periods are going to be fixed. Now, we have some good peak periods. If you look down here, we have notable dates, right? So October of this year, I don't know why I put 20. It's 2019. It's 10 20, 2019. October 20 of this year, you're headed for a major peak period. And that's going to be a really good time for you as we roll into 2020, which again, not only from annual perfections, it's going to be better, but as far as February, you're going to hit another major peak period. So you have, you're looking at really good times coming up end of this year, beginning of next year, around the February-ish time frame. We have two major peak periods both hitting there as well. So let's talk about your loosing of the bond. That's basically where you had major life changes. You have a loosing of the bond at 44 years. And we look over here, we can see that over here at, right here at 2003. As always, leave in the comments sort of what happened in 2003. But around 44, start of year 45, you had a major life change, maybe career, right? Maybe uh, relationship-wise, maybe something in your life changed. And we're always interested to hear what changed because I love loosing of the bonds it's this major thing and it's always interesting to hear you know sort of the history behind it so now um well let's not go here yet so much stuff to talk about let's go back to the chart go back to the thing so we have your notable dates right so one interesting thing that i noticed about you is you're in a 30 year minor peak period now again minor peak period this is not going to be something where everything is just you're just rolling in dough you, you won the lottery everything's wonderful you know uh, Fabio burst out from the, uh, the clouds and, and asked you to make you know it's not one of those major peak period of a 30 year which would be stunning right you'd be like yes it's exactly what I want but you have a 30 year minor peak period I mean things aren't really going to be that bad it's not really going to be that bad you're still in a peak period it's just a minor one 
but it's 30 years long, which is incredible, right? I mean, who wouldn't want that 30 year minor peak period? But be aware at 818, you enter a climbing period. In other words, you're gonna have to sort of just scale up, you're gonna have a climb, you're gonna feel that sort of that climb, that bit of a sting for the climb. It's not gonna be as bad as a descending period, like right over here, where you really sort of feel that, you know, that burn from the descending period and things are going that way. But at 818, you're gonna get a bit of a climb period. Now your major peaks are going to be in Leo and Scorpio. Whenever you see Leo and Scorpio on this chart, that's gonna be that's gonna be your, your major ones, right? A moderate peak period is gonna be across the street from Scorpio over here in Taurus. So whenever you see Taurus on this chart as well, that's gonna be a moderate peak period. And of course, a minor peak period is sort of where you're at in the big 30 year chunk now. So um, transits, it's just, it's just rough. It's just rough, I don't really know what to say. Transits are just rough and I'm choosing the wrong tool. I don't know what I'm doing. Ch transits are just rough. We're just in a rough transiting period. And I mean, you're gonna have to sort of you're gonna have to sort of deal with that, right? I mean, there's not a lot, not a lot that you can do with a lot of these. We're gonna go through each of these, but a lot of these are minor. So, well, no, that's not minor, but a lot of these, a lot of these are minor. So, not gonna be just devastating or something terrible or anything like that. So, a lot of these again are minor, and I wouldn't worry too much about these. Are outers as well? Um, let's see. End of October, we have that. Um, go back to your thing. Ten twenty. We have a major peak period coming, and you and you sort of and you sort of see that because we just have the miners here, and we have a little ding here in December. But you can see sort of as we're winding down October, it's not really going to be too much. We have uh, I mean, seven to one, eh. um, maybe some issues with relationship. We have two retrogrades. <laughs> Again, it's rough. 2019 has been rough. Um, we have two retrogrades, maybe a hit on the relationships, uh, maybe other people. Um, may become a problem, right? May have some unrealistic unrealistic expectations of other people end of October. I, I don't see this as like huge. I, th I see more of a huge. I see, when I think more huge, I think over here where we have these, you know, where we have these major peak periods. So I would look for those as to be a, a real thing. We'll close the outers right here. We got loosed. Uh, we got progressed with transits. One of the interesting things I noticed about your progressed, right? is is that you don't have a lot of you don't have a lot of aspects which is which is interesting so so here's what i'm talking about the inheritance something's going on with inheritance so we have this i mean we have this stellium right here right right in the eighth house here it is just speaking to us right and again i'm asking about the inheritance so it's like something's going on here especially when we have the moon and we have the sun I just have a lot of activity over here and then in the ninth house with travel it looks like we're restricted from traveling somewhere we want to do something sort of a, a, a combat with with finding what we want in our religion or something like that so it looks like something something challenging maybe headed this way or something like that and then we have these sort of progressing progressing over what is it doing sort of progressing over this way as well. So it's just interesting. It's interesting that we don't have, it's just interesting that we don't have a lot of aspects in this that are that are substantial. And, we, and again, we're back to the inheritance. Again, we're back to maybe something challenging, religious-wise uh, challenging. Uh, I mean, I would say travel, but again, we're, we're sticking with the eighth house. So I'm kind of curious as to what's going on over there, but we do have, I mean, a bit of a challenge this way, right? Again, 2019, a bit rough we have a bit of a challenge if we look at a progressed chart we're going to look at the the progressed moon and again we're dead uh, again we're you know not dead center we're just we're just reaching into the eighth house the, you know taxes other people's money uh maybe new births um maybe, maybe the end of some things i don't know so again with that uh, always an interesting topic of discussion if we go with Let's see. So I already gave you your peak date, your peak periods, and all this other thing. We could talk about Mars transits. There's going to be so many. Um, so we talk about 
Domicile lower to the hour marker, right? So again, we're 2019. Let me rerun your chart in 2020. I'd love to do it for you and sort of see what's going on with that. Can I delete that? No. Can I move it over here? Yes. Okay. So, um, so we're right here for the 2019, right? Domicile lower to the hour marker is going to sort of pinch us into Mars per se. So we do have Mars wandering around, but again, it's so many transits and there's so much retrograde. Um, so let's just talk about where it's moving around, right? So July, which is coming up uh, right after this, is going to be we're back to the career. We're back to how you present yourself to the world, what you do, you know, for fame, um, your legacy, things like that. So we're back here, right? So we have sort of a, an issue on um, maybe July 2nd, but uh, again, I'm not going to go through all of these. So again, we're back to up until August, you're looking at something with career. You're looking at... Uh, Mars roaming through the career. So there's going to be activity there. There's going to be some activity there. There's going to be some things that you need to work on, some things you need to work at in order to sort of make that okay. And as Thomas saw Lord of the Hour Marker, again, is positive, but we have the malefic contract of the sect at the same time. So we're going to have that mix of it, it's going to be career conscious. It's going to be career type focus or it's going to be legacy type focus up until August and then you can sort of see right here at the the point here where it sort of lets up uh, let's see from 10 to 11 and from 10 to 11 now we're talking about going back to your chart now we're talking about this uh, so many windows where'd your graphic go so we're going back to your graphic that is underneath something Okay, well anyway, if we went back to the graphic, again, one of your peak periods coming up would be uh, within the August time frame, right? So we got that over here, we have that end of the 10th house and moving into the 11th house during this peak period. So that really points me to that you're gonna make some new, uh, some sort of a new friends or some new contacts this year that I think are going to last you deep into next year that are going to sort of make you money and can contribute to the 2020 perfection year of money, right? I think, again, I think you're going to meet someone, not that it's going to give you money, but someone that's going to be able to uh, help you earn money or someone that's going to be able to work with you maybe on a small business project or something or some type of you know hobby project where you're going to be coming into some money. I think that's what we're pointing to here because it's too coincidental in my opinion that right when you're about to hit your peak period of August, you know, uh, the August peak period um, that we're looking at, you know, something like this, something coming into the 11th house. And again, we have the 12th house for October and things like this. But again, I think that you're going to meet someone that's going to, uh, that's going to help you out with money, that's going to help you earn money. And I think that's sort of what we're pointing to in that as well. We can go sort of look. I think I'm probably running really long at this point. So we can sort of go look around here about that point when you're entering the 11th house, right? So we have the 11th house going to be August 8th. It's going to be August something. Let's see, about August here about August 13th. So here's August 13th. Again, we're hitting this peak period, level three, right? This major peak period. And here we have Jupiter, look at this. So this explains it, this explains it. We have Jupiter sneaking into the first house, right? So we have Jupiter here and let's see, Jupiter's there for a while, but we still have Jupiter. But that's interesting that it has that uh, fairly tight aspect Coming up here, where is it going to be on 12? Where are you going to be on 12? Come on, 12. Come on, 12. We have sort of a tight aspect with, yeah, sort of a tight aspect with your lot of fortune. And I think that's sort of it being in the first house sort of is one of the indicators of this. I know it went retrograde, but whatever. Um, one of these uh, indicators of this as well. So, again, I think that, that you're in for a better time in 2020. I think that when it sort of sneaks into the 11th house, you're going to meet someone that's going to help you as far as project concerned or something like that. So anyway, um, 12th house, October, uh, maybe not so much, but 2020 is going to be great. 
I think you're in for a great year to sort of ride the wave as this year sort of, you know, climbs into that August period, and then you maybe can have another down period after that August period. But 2020 is going to be a lot better for you. So anyway, if you have any questions, let me know. If you would like an astrology reading, please email me the link in the description. Please be aware I have almost 100 requests, so it could be uh, some time before, before the free astrology reading. Anyway, uh, if you like this video, please hit like and subscribe. And as always, thank you so much for watching.